What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove. And if you've been following along with our channel, you know that I've recently brought my folks here from Virginia to move into the first house that we built here on Piney Grove. We're gonna be building our house over the next couple of years, but the first thing was to get their house built so we could move them here so we could help care for them in the local area. They were just too far away for us to be able to care for them up in Virginia or provide any sort of assistance for them. So we got them settled in and uh, we're working through some of those things right now, but they need a mailbox. So if you've never put in a mailbox, I'm gonna tell you, it's a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. I thought, just look at the other mailboxes in the area and see how they're situated on the road and put yours in, you know, the way you want it, the way you want it to look. Well, we, we contacted the post office. They said they'd come out here and put a flag. They didn't put a flag. We called them back and they said, well, there's already a mailbox post there. We said, no, that's not where we want it. There's a dip in the road. It'll make it hard to get the mail in and out. And uh, basically they said, you know, just put up a mailbox. So we asked permission. We thought we were going to get permission and we ended up just getting uh, figured out yourself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to figure it out ourselves. Time to put the address on. Y'all don't get to see that. But the first thing I had to do is put the auger on. For those of you out there that have tractors with three-point hitches, the auger is one of the hardest things that you put on a tractor. It doesn't have a uh, top link on your three-point hitch. It has that long yellow arm in this case that goes to the top link area. But I also had to rebuild the auger because the points were worn out. And if you look behind me, you see the fence that Deb and I built. And I'll spin around so you can see the rest of it. But we put in over 100 posts here. And probably we put in 120, 130 posts on the property. And we have a real hard-to-dig red clay here in Florida. And that red clay wears out your auger bit. So our auger bit got worn out. And it sheared off the bolts and I could not find new auger bits for it. So I had to have some fabricated. Okay, so I just put these on yesterday, but I had my welder take some hardened steel and create new auger bits. They're both the same. There's that one. I spin this around. There's the other one. But you can see that uh, they're full length, uh, both they're full length, both coming this way and that way where the other ones were worn. And I put some hardened bolts in there and tighten them down with an impact wrench. So again, you think uh, putting in a mailbox is simple, but I had to do all those things before I came out here. So I'll show you what we're working with. We wanted to keep matching post with our fence. So I took a post and cut it to the right length. Mailboxes are supposed to be 42 inches off the ground. So I'm gonna dig this down two feet and then pack it in. And uh, then the mailbox should be right where it needs to be. I think they said between 42 and 48 inches. that does is that gives me a place for the auger to fit in that hole so it doesn't go somewhere where I don't want it to go. So first thing I do is dig that down about six or eight inches and then I use the auger for the rest of it. It went fairly well. I only did a two foot hole. That's the way I measured the post, a two foot hole. And then I should get that 42 inches, but I stopped right at two foot. I know the top of my auger where the flutes stop are two feet. And then I'm gonna dig the rest by hand, clean it out and get this thing leveled up and ready to put the mailbox on. Now I cut the top of this with a chainsaw. So what's more important to me is that the top of this is level than if the post is perfectly straight up and down. No one's gonna see if the post is off a little, but they'll definitely see if the mailbox is not straight. If you've ever dealt with round fence posts, they're not perfectly straight. They're a tree that they've ripped down to the core and they don't do it perfectly. The machines don't do it perfectly. So this is actually pretty good straight up and down and across the top. So I got a, got a little lucky there. That'll give me a nice level post. Now I'm gonna measure, make sure I, I've got the right height up from the ground so they can reach in and put the mail in from the truck. I think they told me 40, 42 to 48 inches. 
That's 48. That probably needs to go down a little. What I'm imagining is where the camera is, the mail lady comes up or mailman, whichever it is, and uh, they want to reach out their window and they don't want to reach too high or too low. And I think I'm at the extreme boundary of, uh, of the upper limit. And then I'm going to be putting two by sixes on top of this. So I'm going to, I'm going to sink this down a couple more inches. Now, as far as utilities and should, you know, you should always call before you dig. This is very, rural country property. There's no telephone service out there. There's no underground ground telephone lines. There's no underground fiber optics and there's also uh, no underground electric. The electric is all above ground and uh, all that stuff is gonna be three foot or deeper. I'm digging a two foot hole. But you should always call before you dig, uh, especially if you're somewhere where there might be buried utilities. I'm now down at a deep red clay layer. And it's easy to dig because we've had lots of rain. But if it was dry, you'd have to chip away. I'd have to get my little digger tool that I use to hook up three-point hitch equipment because I wouldn't be able to chop through this clay like I am. I think Jason Aldean has a song. His neck is red like Alabama clay. Maybe it's red like Florida clay. Okay, if I imagine the postal services truck coming up about here. We're right at 41. That's perfect. So I was singing that song in my head about Nick as red as Alabama clay and I realized that's, that's the king. That's Garth Brooks. I disrespected the king right there. So it's Garth Brooks that sang that song, but I prefer Jason Aldean over Garth Brooks anyway to listen to. But don't unsubscribe because of who I listen to. They're both great performers. I've seen Aldean in concert. I've never seen Garth in concert, but I, I wanted to set the record straight there. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just packing, packing it real tight. I'm getting that clay down there on the bottom and uh, going around it with a hoe. This is a hoe, not her, but this. This That's is a, a hoe. hoe. This is a wife. I like the hoe because it's pointed a little bit from using it for this and it's light. I've actually got a packing stick, a wooden packing stick, but I forgot to bring it. And Deb has grabbed my packer but this just gets it real tight down there at the bottom. And that's what's important on any kind of post, like a fence post or, or a mailbox post, is get it real tight on the bottom and that'll keep it from wiggling up top. I mean, it's important to get it all tight, but the very bottom is the most important. But I got it perfectly level. I cut that with a chainsaw and I didn't use a square. I guess I'm impressed with myself that I got it cut so square. I already pre-cut these boards. I think they were two by eights. I had to rip one down and they'll sit here, screwed into the top of this post. And then the mailbox will sit on top of these and you'll screw the mailbox into these. Got to pre-drill it. It's really hard treated wood. I've had it for several years drying. So I want to square it up perfectly with the road. I don't really know how to do that. Put a square on the post and kind of sight it in. Let's go down the road and make sure that it squares parallel and then I can draw a center line. I just don't want it to be crooked. I want to do it one time. Okay, I've looked at it from that side. I've looked at it from that side. And I think that's uh, that's good enough. Squared off with the road. Just going to put some reference lines on here. Parallel reference lines based on that first line. Just so I know when I put those two pieces of wood on, just have something to go by. Six over three inches that way, four inches that way. This is more complicated than I thought to get this perfect. We want that mailbox centered perfectly on this post. We have to do some measuring. Okay, say that I'm type A or any other word you want to use, but uh, I, w I really want that mailbox to be straight as you're coming down the road, kind of parallel to the road, and that's proven to be more challenging than I thought. So I just put the mailbox itself up there, and then I can take measurements from that. You can immediately tell that's crooked. I'm glad I did it this way. I can't believe how difficult this is. I'm gonna move the tractor so I can get a better view of it. So now I'm thinking it's easier for the mail carrier if it's turned a little. Mail carrier would come like this. I think that's better. If they complain, I can always take the screws out and turn it perfectly squared up with the road, but I think that's a better way for them to put the mail in. All right, guys, I spared you easily 45 minutes of ciphering. Once I got the mailbox the way I wanted it, then I had to put the boards on top and it was hard to remember or hard to measure the difference between the boards and the bottom of the mailbox, but I have it the way I want it. I got it at a slight angle. I think this will make it easier for the mail carrier to put the mail in and it's not canted too much, 
where it looks weird. So I'm gonna walk towards it with the camera and uh, let me know what you think. I'm standing in the road and you can see the mailbox is canted. And imagine you're the mail carrier and you're coming in and I assume you got a right-hand drive car. You pull in here, it's a little bit at, at an angle and you give us our mail. All right, this is the final fit. That's the way it's gonna be because I'm not moving it now. What I'm gonna do to fasten the mailbox to the two by sixes or two by eights that I have underneath here, the wood, is I was gonna come from the side of the mailbox with some screws and these stainless steel uh, finish uh, trim rings right here. It's something we use a lot on boats and you can take a wood type of screw with that V in it and then it'll fit flat like that. You'll see it's a real neat finish. It won't catch any mail that comes in here. Just gives it a good clean look. And also because it's wider than the screw head, it's gonna be stronger. So sure that still closes. And I'm gonna put six in there. And if that don't hold it, we got bigger problems. Luckily this DeWalt drill is real short and I put the bit directly into the end here and it, it works real well. That's not going anywhere. All right, guys, that was the last step for moving my parents here, giving them a mailbox so they can receive mail. They've already done some address changes, so they needed this done. This is the third day I tried to put in this mailbox, but I got rained out every day, and it's actually sprinkling on me now, so I gotta get these tools inside. The mailbox is done, uh, except for the letters on the post. We already got the numbers on the side. We now need to put the numbers on the post, but uh, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing and comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, y'all.